ChatGPT, right? This amazing chatbot that solves so many tasks for us and has an amazing master of language, right? And it's taking the whole world by storm in some sense. Seems almost magical. And it will be a lot of fun because to, today we're going to kind of go through all this and dissect it and see is it actually that magical? Is it perhaps uh, not as smart as we think it is? But also, does it perhaps have huge potential because it is so simple to scale up? And the question is like, how far can we push these concepts? All right, so let's start with just breaking down the actual kind of uh, name, right? Chat GPT. So the chat part is pretty obvious. It stands for just chat, like a chat bot, right? But GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. And we're going to break this down because it's broken down into basically three different aspects. So first we have chat, you know, this is just a chat aspect, we'll talk about it later, and then we have generative pre-trained and then transformer. And we'll start talking about generative pre-trained, which I also think is the most important aspect. I think actually like the lengths of the concepts here correspond to how important they are for chat GPT. And uh, so we'll start talking about this aspect first. All right, so what is generative pre-trained mean, and it just means what we talked about before, basically, that we learn by just getting text from the internet, right, the sequence of words, and we train now this model to predict the next word based on previous words, right? So maybe I just, you know, download some text from online, and it's uh, the text, I went to the financial bank to deposit money, period, right? Now the model trains on that, and it does it word by word. So it starts off just getting the brain right here, the model, the computer, inputs and digests I, and then it tries to predict the next target, right? And it, it right, also to just make it clear, like, it doesn't have the target, like we only know the target, so it has to guess somehow without knowing. So if it's wrong, we'll say like, well, this is bad, you know, we gave some kind of negative feedback, hey, don't do this again, and when it's, and then when it's right, we give it some uh, positive feedback saying, great, you know, keep this up and do more like this in some sense. But of course, it's a very simplified scenario. Let's go to the next one here, right? What we really do when we want to predict I went, uh, you know, the target here, there's a lot of, you know, incorrect ones and only one correct one. So maybe you want to allow the model to guess kind of more than just twice or once, right? Or just give it, you know, you want, you want to be able to use as much information as possible from this training example. And you want to be able to say that, yeah, this is the correct one, but it's also very useful for the model to know about all the incorrect ones, because it also allows us to understand these are not relevant in this context, right? So we might go through you know, a few different correct ones that it might score or, or guess, right? Then we give negative feedback. These, don't, these are not relevant in this context. And then when it actually gets the right one, we say, great, you know, this is the correct one. And we can kind of, we use this example now more, you know, we use more of the information somehow. We con convey more of the information. So, so how this really works, right, is that we want to use as much information as we can from this example, which means that we're going to say, you know, tell the uh, brain to basically, right, the next sample, when it wants to predict the target of I went to, it generates a score for all the words in the English language. Sounds ridiculously expensive, maybe, but it does, right? And there's way ways to speed this up, but it does generate a score for each word. And it's a probability distribution, right? So that's a sum to one and be positive. But it's basically a score of how likely they think each specific word is to be next in some sense, right? So it doesn't know, so it generates this, this, this scores and distribution over all possible words. And then we say, great, now that you've done this, we can actually point to say that the is the correct one. So now, you know, a new network has tons of parameters or, or neurons, right? And it con con configures itself. Then we basically say like, hey, actually, change your parameters and your neurons a little bit so the next time when you see this example or something similar, right? You push the correct one, the scores up here a little bit, and the wrongs one down a little bit, right? So you get a lot of information up from this sample and you push the correct one up a little bit and all the negative words down a little bit. And um, so the next time that they see something similar, we actually do better, right, based on this data. And of course, this sounds perhaps, it's a very simplified kind of explanation of backpropagation and gradient descent. But when you do this in batches now with tons of examples, you take small steps in the right direction to be more and more wise and do better and better. And you turn a lot of data, you know, 
it learns to do this really, really well and build up a very nuanced understanding and capability of predicting the next word based on previous words because it's trained on so much data, right? And of course, there are perhaps multiple sentences that start with I, when, to, with different targets, but it learns to generalize across all those different examples, right? And the longer the sequence that it trains you know, on gets, the more unique to get as well, right? Um, so this is how it's trained. Very, very simple in a sense, right? But let's also talk a little bit how it's actually used now that it's been trained, right? Oh, sorry, we, we, right, we, we run this on the whole sequence, right? So we also make use of the, all the words in some sense in this whole sequence to use this information and the data we get um, as much as we can, right? Okay, so now say we wanna use this, we've trained it and we wanna be able to interface with it. What we do now is that we just do a very similar thing, right? But we start, give, we give the model a starting point. Here I just say like, hey, I type in I and that will fit it to the model, right? But typically, you don't want to run your model with just an input I, right? It's not very interesting, but in this example, you just basically give the model a starting point, where it should start off, right? And this is where the user can type something, but we give it I, and then it generates a distribution, again, over all possible words, right? And now, of course, there's no target, so there's no, nobody to help the model, so it has to be like, well, I gotta pick, uh, you know, a guess myself, and of course, what it does basically is just picks, pick, picks the argmax, so the most likely word. Um, it picks the most likely word and it puts that and adds that to the sequence, right? And then we have a new sequence and input and we just do the same thing, right? We, on, that, on that input, it generates a new distribution of all possible words because there's more information, different information. And then we pick the argmax again and we put it in our sequence and we keep going. Uh, right, so this is kind of very simple. One word at a time, we add it to our sequence, we make it longer, and we can run until, you know, the model predicts a period or something. So like, oh, that's the end, kind of end token, right? A period, if you just want to produce a sentence or something. Uh, but of course, what's very, like if we say we're able to do this really, really well, optimally, what's inst interesting perhaps is like, how can we use this now? What kind of input can we give? Because as I talked about in previous lectures, if we give it an interesting input or starting point and let it go and generate the next sentence based on that, it can be very, very helpful if it's really good at it, right? So in this, you know, if you look at the input side here, right? Basically input starting points here are all tasks. And if the models are able to very accurately and optimally predict the next word and generate the next sentence of this, it has to solve these different tasks, right? And the question is like, well, does it learn to do this from just training on the internet, right? Yes, it does. That's the kind of amazing part. So if you get it, if you give it the input, answer this question, what is a riverbank, question mark, and let it run until it produces a period, then it will output the land at either edge of a river, right? It's quite amazing, but also that's the most sensible answer in some sense, if you think about it, right? If you ask, translate to German, my name is, right? It'll output the, the translation because it's also the most sensible completion. Right, and of course you can do autocomplete in this sense, but it could also do classification, because you know, if you ask this question about, right, is this positive, uh, is this a positive or negative product review? I love this product. You know, the most sensible output here is to generate the actual thing you're looking for in some sense, because it's trained on, it's trained on human data on the internet, right, that behaves in human ways, so it has to replicate that. And that's, you know, the core of chat TTP, Right, both how it's trained and how it works. So when you type something, you just literally condition this model and then it starts generating the next, in, you know, the next word after word until it gets to stop token, which says like, hey, I'm done, I'm gonna now show it to you. That's how simple you know, chat GPT is. And, but that's crazy how well it works, right? But it's this simple thing. And of course the question is like, why is this so nice? Well, it's so nice as well because you can train on all texts on the internet. There's no human being in the loop. You can just keep going. Bigger and bigger models, right? So I guess one important aspect of chat GPT is definitely uh, its size. So you know, it's training this way, but it's scaled up enormously, right? Yeah, I think it has the GPT model that uh, chat GPT is trained, you know, the foundational model of it has more than 175 billion parameters. And just in compute, like almost like just electricity bill, right? Bills, it costs $5 million just to train. 
So just like it basically goes through a big proportion of the internet, just trains on predicting the next word based on previous words. So somehow from the scale of it, it just gets, becomes extremely, extremely good at, at solving these different tasks, right?